Welcome everybody to Bob Strom's oh. Old Salem in Ballad and Song Workshop presentation, however you want to say it. Um, this is uh, this is fantastic for us to be doing this. Uh, Bob is an amazing uh, researcher, and uh, he's, he's a great presenter. He's he's dug through so much history here, and he's really unearthed some real treasures. And I think what a lot of what I see, I mean, when I when we've talked about this, I really see this as kind of a start of something that we can really um, dig through. You know, maybe get some of these old songs. And maybe do something with these because I mean already he's you know he's you you know Raylene is Raylene George is our church organist and pianist and she's playing some of the songs here to give us a, a, a feel for some of the music from the 1800s 1700s and and uh, sometimes earlier um, so the program will include Salem songs related to the California Gold Rush. The Salem Willows with musical selections, of course, by Raylene George, and also Reverend Samuel Wister's contribution to singing of the Psalms. And Reverend Wister was one of our pastors at Tabernacle. He was a minister from 1803 to 1821. So take it away, Bob. Thank well, you. thank you, Michael, for that introduction. That was something. <laughs> well, it is Veterans Day, so I had to do a military song um, all the Salem Mechanic Light Infantry Quick Step. Now I want you to look at this little photo right here. Um, this is Salem Common. A lot of uh, a lot of military folks would come and camp out on Salem Common and do their their you know mustering and practicing and right on the common. And you can see it's the Salem Common. Here's a here's a little postcard of the Salem Common. And here's here's this arch right before it got repaired. So it is this it's that same arch that's right here. So um, it's certainly not used for mustering anymore of the military. Actually, it is sometimes they do do activities on there, but not like it was at one point um, in the 1850s. So, um, so Raylene was so gracious in um, letting me record um, several things that she that uh, she played on piano for me one day, and uh, and today I'll play a couple things that she that we recorded. And I'll play this first one. It's a it's a march dedicated to the Salem Light Infantry Group and played by the Boston Brass Brass Band. So I'll play a little bit of this um, by Raylene. Thanks, Raylene, for doing that. Okay. <laughs> So I gave I gave Raylene all the hard pots, hard hard tunes to play, and she did a great job. A nice little um, quick step, dedicated to the Salem uh, group. I, at my last talk, and I know several people were here, um, I ended my program with a song, this King Alcohol song, and people were very intrigued with the song, and they liked it very much because of the choral arrangement. So, but I didn't give any background information, so I figured I'd give a little background information about. Um, the song King Alcohol. It was really first performed in Salem by the Hutchinson family in like 1847. And this is a picture of um, Father Matthew. He is uh, the apostle of temperance. So uh, he came, Irish, um, Irish uh, citizen, came to Salem in 1849, and he led the temperance movement in Salem for the next uh, you know, period of time. And then over the next, you know, 20, 30 years, the temperance movement grew. And then as you know, it really led to prohibition, prohibition here in the States. But Father Matthew, Matthew was the person who really kind of got the word around. This on the left, the picture of Father Matthew on Hawthorne Boulevard, that's where his statue is. 
originally it was located right here in Phoenix Square, which is right outside of Red's Diner. It's that same where the laundry building is and Red's Diner. That was the original location. I guess when they widened that road or whatever they did um, because of cars and that sort of thing, they moved it to Hawthorne Boulevard. So you can still see it at the end of the boulevard, right by Pickering Wharf. Still I could there. see it right now. Oh, that's right. You're right there, Bob. You can. Looking out my window. I'm looking right yeah. down at it. Yep. <laughs> so, um, but here's Father Matthew. This is a statue of Father Matthew in Cork Island. And there's another one in Dublin Island. And the, the only other statue in the world is in Philadelphia. So there are four statues of Father Matthew. Salem is lucky enough to have one. King, um, the leader of the temperance movement, which led to prohibition. Here's, here's a picture of the uh, Hutchinson family. Um, they're from Lynn and Milford, New Hampshire. They had a very big family, so they lived in both places um, and were farmed and also traveled around singing on various configurations as a family group. Um, this is a concert uh, in Salem in 1864. So, so the first time they sang the song was in 1847. So they've been, they sang the song for years. Uh, the Hutchinson family were liberal thinkers. They believed in abolition. Um, freedom, freedom, freeing the slaves. They believe in women's right, women's right to vote, in temperance. Um, so this is this is King Alcohol with King Alcohol. They performed here in Salem, um, and they probably performed it over and over again because they were trying to spread the word. And uh, I'll play a little King bit of King Alcohol. King Alcohol has many forms by which he catches men. He is a beast of many horns, and ever thus has been. For there's rum, and gin, and beer, and wine, and, and brandy of logwood hue, and hawk, and port, and flip, combined to make a man look blue. He says be merry, for his good sherry, and tom, and cherry, champagne, and parry, and, and spirits of every hue. Oh, one of these are fiendish crew, as ever a mortal knew. Oh, one of these are fiendish crew, as ever a mortal knew. King alcohol. There you go, King alcohol. Um, by the Hutchison family. The next song, we'll talk about the gold rush for the next couple of songs. Uh, I Come From Salem City, pretty popular song. It was first sung when the Bark Eliza left Salem for the gold rush in 18, December of 1848. It was the first ship that went to California in the gold rush, um, bringing gold seekers and supplies. Um, it left Derby Wharf, the wharf is still here, as everybody knows. Uh, you're from Salem. It left right here. And that song was sung on the wharf as it left Salem. Um, the, song was, the song was sung to the tune of uh, Oh Susanna, which, which, you'll, um, which you'll hear in a couple of minutes. But the Bark Eliza was owned by John Bertram. I think people know him. You know, the Bertram oh. home is in Salem. The Salem, pub, excuse me, the Salem Public Library uh, was his building. He donated a building for the, the Salem Hospital. Um, and he made his really second or third fortune taking gold seekers and also selling supplies. So this is an ad in the Salem Gazette advertising for supplies. They, he was buying up shovels and picks and jeans and boots and gloves to sell to the gold rush folks. He he wanted nothing to do with being a gold seeker because he, but he just wanted to supply the folks there and he sold all his uh, supplies there. He also built several other ships, the Witch of the Way, the John Bertram, um, the Witchcraft, that all went to the Gold Rush. They were clipper ships, so they were kind of fast-moving ships. This is the John Bertram Mansion on Essex Street, now the Salem Public Library. Um, he donated it, donated it to the City of Salem for the library around 1880. This is a picture of the, the back end of the library, the addition is not here, but you can tell with the fountain Right here, see the fountain in both photos. Um, there's, these red and white flowers uh, depict the colors that Bertram would fly, would uh, that flew on each one of his ships. The red and white uh, were his colors, so every ship that left Salem always sailed with a red and white um, colors and a flag. And these flowers are still planted to this day from an endowment left by Bertram, and I believe. The woman who gives the money is a descendant of Bertram. I'm not sure how um, at this point, but that that is it's pretty amazing how his uh, legacy is still living on here in Salem. Mm -hmm. Right now, as people drive by the library, you can see this little kind of covering over the over the uh, fountain. They're uh, renovating the stat the uh, the fountain. Um, 
they, they raised all the money for it. So over the next, you know, six, eight months or a year, we'll all be back to it was in 1850. Going back to the Park Eliza. This is an article from the Salem Observer. And in the article, it said, at the moment of casting off, a trio of passengers appeared on the quarter deck and sang this following, the following humorous ditty. In the article, they, they called it the California Immigrant, but we know it mostly in the folk world as I come from Salem City. This is my friend Sarah and Bill Smith, who longtime Salem residents. Bill fortunately recorded this for me um, in June of 2020. Um, and unfortunately, right after that, he, he passed away, which and Sarah passed away also uh, earlier in that year. Um, but I'll play a little bit of Bill's um, recording. Salem City with a wash bowl on my knee. I'm going to California, the gold dust for to see. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun's so hot I froze to death, brothers don't you cry. Oh California, that's the land for me. I'm bound for San Francisco with a wash bowl on my knee. So that was that was Bill singing that um, I come from Salem City, but what was funny a couple of weeks ago I was looking through an old newspaper, the Salem Register, 1851, and a gentleman who was on that ship Eliza went to California, realized that it wasn't really the place for him, came back to Salem about two and a half years later, and he wrote this song, which is a parody of the song you just heard, and his chorus goes, "Oh California, you're not the land for me." I've been and left my wash bowl, I left upon my knee. So um, he obviously didn't have any success finding gold. And later in the song, he talks about how his pockets were filled with rocks and how the roads were all muddy and they were full of uh, fiddle players and drunkards. Imagine what it was like, certainly the Wild West. I come from California. The next gold rush song is the California Digger song, written by Jesse Hutchinson, the leader of the Hutchinson family singing group. And it was sung on the Barca Lagrange as it left Salem, Massachusetts. There's the, the Hutchinson family, another picture of them. And the Barca Lagrange, as you remember, Derby Wharf is this long wharf where the Eliza sailed from. India Wharf right here is where the Lagrange sailed from. Now, if if you if you know the harbor at all, this this is all landfill right now, and our power plant and water treatment facility is here. But the Lagrange was was housed right here, and that's where it left from. And the California Diggers was sung from that particular point. I'll do a little, I'll do a little sampling of this. Then ho, boys, ho, for California, I owe. There's plenty of gold, so I've been told on the banks of the Sacramento. We've formed our band, we're all well manned. The journey of part of the promised land. The golden shore is rich in store on the banks of the Sacramento shore. Then ho, boys, ho, for California, I owe. There's plenty of gold, so I've been told on the banks of the Sacramento. The gold is... Um, one thing about these last two songs, you know, they're still sung today, which is pretty amazing. Um, and if it wasn't for the ships leaving Salem, we wouldn't have those songs. Uh, so it's pretty amazing how they've lived a long life when it comes to... Um, when it comes to uh, folk music in the Gold Rush in Salem. So the LaGrange, when it got to California, it just stayed in the harbor, and for the next 10 years, it was used as a prison ship in, in San Francisco Harbor. As you can see it here, the laundry is on top over here, and there's a prison. So it, they had to do something, I guess, with the wildness that was happening in San Francisco. And then soon after that, the LaGrange, along with several of the tall ships that were in the harbor, were, they were all kind of rotting and falling apart. They just kind of buried them in the harbor. And continued to fill the harbor to make um, downtown San Francisco a little better. Okay, um, the Psalms of David. <clears throat> this is Isaac Watt, congregational minister, really attributed him of, you of, he wanted folks to sing the Psalms during the church service. And he is accredited with over 750 hymns 
which is a pretty amazing feat for somebody, somebody like that. This is this is the book of Psalms. He did 150 Psalms in this book and 475 spiritual songs and hymns. This book was published in 1795. This version, anyways, was probably published a little before that. And you can see it was all the Psalms, um, all by uh, Isaac Watt, putting them in a book so people could sing them in church. Here's Psalm number 57. And what, what uh, Watt did it is when he sang the Psalms in church, he would say, we well, would sing this long meter, which means the first and third line of the same melody and the second and fourth line of the same melody. The problem with that was you knew those lines were the same, but you didn't know what the melody was. So if you were in a different church, the minister might sing a different melody to the psalm. So interesting concept. So there's really no standardization of, of the melodies related to the psalms um, in Isaac Watt. But along comes our friend, Reverend Samuel Worcester, as people know, minister of, of, of Salem Church from 1803 to 1821. Um, and what he did, put that up there. Oh, there's, there's the Tabernacle Church, an old photo of the Tabernacle. Um, and what he did is he re rewrote the book, kept all this, didn't really write the, the Psalms over and the spiritual songs. But what he did, this book is published in 1854, uh, certainly after his death. But what you can see, um, selections, what does it say, musical selections by Worcester expression musical expressions and what he did is again psalm 57 but he applied uh attributed a tune to go along with this psalm so 100 or blending of the two tunes that he associates with this psalm so when people sang it they know they would sing this psalm to the tune 100. so he kind of standardized the tunes certainly after what uh, started the process so I, I think that's a pretty big, um, pretty big step in the musical world when it comes to um, church singing. I just put them here side by side so folks could see, you know, how similar they were, and um, really the only variation that, that Worcester um, did was attributed a tune to each psalm. I'll play it. You'll recognize um, one hundred, and you can follow along the words if you want. You can sing right, right to it. Well, that was that was uh, I'm sure you recognize that I'm sure Raylene has played that tune um, you know a thousand times I was gonna say a couple hundred but probably a thousand times over the years um, so that's our friend uh, those are the Psalms and there's our friend Worcester again he's buried he died in Tennessee um, he went down south to um, you know to convert the you know the Native Americans to Christianity and also for his health I guess he wasn't doing very well but he died in Tennessee, was buried there for a few years, and then eventually brought back to Salem, and now he's buried in uh, Harmony Grove Cemetery. I had to throw this in. Jim McAllister, a uh, Salem his historian, people know him. Just the other day, he sent this photo to Jen and I, I think it was uh, Tuesday or Monday, and he took it that morning, and you can see the shadow of, this, of uh, the tabernacle uh, steeple on the courthouses. I just thought that was pretty cool, so I just put it in there for the heck of it. But it was fun. But Jim, Jim was really nice to send that along. Isn't that a great shot? So, okay, the Salem Willows for mine, a waltz. Well, this W. E. Brown, he was manager of the casino, the dancing casino here, um, down in the Willows, and he would book bands come in and play and it was uh you know kind of ballroom dancing and uh, one of the bands that he booked was the Collins Singing and Novelty Orchestra from Marlboro they would travel down here probably stay a couple days probably a week or so played every night there and what they did is this band wrote the song Salem Willows for Mine Walls 
kind of you can tell um, it's certainly not in the folk music vein, but in the, the dance music vein, um, because that was getting popular in the 1900s, 1910s, 1920s. People were dancing to jazz bands and um, uh, big bands moving away from military bands and that, that sort of thing. Um, so I'll play it again. Raylene recorded this for me a little. Um, she played on piano. There's a, there's a short introduction, but um, see if you can follow along the words and we'll, we'll play a, a verse and see if you can follow along. Okay. <laughs> Salem Willows for Mine. Nice little tune, but diff totally different than the songs that you heard from that were sung um, by the Hutchinsons and um, for the Gold Rush, the Leaving of the Gold Rush. Okay. Ye Golden Lamps of Heaven, Farewell. Um, this is Nathaniel Bowditch. I think a lot of people know him. Lives in, lived here in this. Uh, it's historic Salem at this point. So his house is on North Street in Salem. He is attributed for um, kind of rewriting and correcting uh, the navigational charts for ships that when they read the, the longitude and latitude and the stars, he realized that being a mathematician, mathematician that a lot of the calculations in the book were wrong. So he redid a lot of those calculations. And it was one reason why the Salem ships traveled all over the world and were very successful because they could go to various places quicker than other ships can um, because they had the new calculations by Nathaniel Vowditch, which is pretty amazing. Now, in our technology wor world, this American Practical Navigator is the only book that's on every American naval ship in our fleet. It's, it's still a hard copy book. Um, it's not on, it's not digitized. It's, it's just, it's a hard copy. So um, if worse comes to worse, uh, you know, the captain of the ship can always read the charts and figure out how to get someplace if for some reason his radar went down and that sort of thing. So it's pretty amazing that a book is still on all the ships in our fleet. This is, uh, this is a museum, the Sail and Power and Steam Museum in Rockland, Maine. Um, Bowditch has family up in Rockland, and every year they donate all his sextants and navigational equipment to the museum to show in, on display. And every year they take it back when the museum closes for the winter, and then in the spring they give it back to the museum. So you can certainly go to the museum and see all of Nathaniel Bowditch's um, equipment and what he used for navigation. This is uh, the discourse at his funeral. Uh, he died and, uh, well, obviously he died. <laughs> and this is the, the uh, his funeral um, kind of music and, and uh, proceedings uh, when it happened. One song that they sang, Ye Golden Lamps, um, which is written here. You might not be able to read those, but that's those are the lyrics right here. The tune was written by our friend Henry K. Oliver, who lived on um, 142 Federal Street. I talked a little bit about him before. He wrote that tune, Federal Street, but he wrote the melody for this tune. Now, I have a sample of this tune. It doesn't quite fit the melody that's written here on the page, but it gives you an idea of, of kind of the funeral song that was sung at that point by Nathaniel Bowditch. Thank you. 
pretty moving piece, if you ask me. Um, pretty amazing, pretty moving piece. So, well, we'll talk about Susanna Martin. She was one of the accused um, witches of Salem. And this is her uh, memorial stone that they have in the Salem Witch Memorial, right? Bob, you probably can look out your other window and see this, this on the other side of your house there. Um, it's in downtown Salem. <clears throat> and uh, Susanna was uh, from Amesbury. You know, but accused as a as a witch, put in Salem jail, and then hung on Gallows Hill. Um, this is the Salem Witch House in, uh, in Salem, obviously on Essex Street and Summer Street. It's really one of the last, one of the only houses that, from that period, that has anything to do with the, the, the witch trials. This is the house before it was moved. When they widened North Street, the house really kind of faced the YMCA. They widen the road and they turn the house around so it faces Essex Street. And this is a postcard from, oh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when this is, probably uh, 1940 or 1930 or so. Um, so that's how that's how it looked. At one point, there was a drugstore right in front here. So, and this is uh, Diane Taraz. Uh, she's a folk singer, lives in Arlington. And again, she... She had this song already recorded on her, on her CD, The Silver Dagger, as you can see. And she, she does uh, women's history, you know, through folk music. And she allowed me to use her song on our CD that we put together. Play some of that. Susanna Martin was a witch She dwelt in Amesbury With salty tongue and sparkling eyes She worked her sorcery And as unto the judge's court The sheriffs brought her hither The lilacs drooped as she passed by And they were seen to wither which was she, though trig and neat, with comely head held high? It did not seem that such as she with Satan so would vie. And when in court the afflicted ones proclaimed her evil ways, she laughed aloud and boldly then met Cotton Mather's gaze. Susanna Martin by Diane Taraz. Okay, our friend Dexter Smith. Dexter Smith was born in Salem. And, you know, some people, he wrote hundreds of songs and poems. And half of them are to music, some are just in a poetry book. His, his big hit, if you could have a big hit, was Ring the Bell Softly. This crepe on the door. And the idea behind this song was... Uh, his father wanted to, him to go into the his business and work for him in his shop, but he wanted nothing to do with that. He wanted to write music and write songs. So, but to keep him keep him um, employed, he was a postman in Boston, and he noticed every once in a while when he was delivering his mail that people would put black crepe paper uh, or some type of black fabric on you on your front door which means somebody is being waked inside or somebody died recently. So, you know, ring the bell softly. So be quiet as you're coming in or as you're visiting the folks there. So he wrote this song and this song was compared to some of the songs that um, Robert Burns wrote, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I'm not sure he's as, I know he's not as popular as Robert Burns, but he has a lot of interesting and very good songs. Um, ring the bell softly. There's another song, Bells of Tech. And I see that Dexter Smith, uh, and there's his book of poetry. I know Tim Lutz has the original copy of his book. Um, that's certainly not the cover on it. And here's, there's crepe on the door. And, you know, it just thinks, you know, someone passed away and all the wakes used to be in the front rooms of people's homes at, at some point. Um, I'm not sure I can do that, but um, that was, that was life at one point. So I'll play a little bit of this.
pretty pretty interesting song, isn't it? You know, but it does give you a picture of of life at that point. Well, um, whoops, I'm sorry about that. Okay, Deacon Giles. Well, Deacon Giles was a minister in Salem. Um, he lived a he lived a life of dichotomy, if you ask me. Uh, in the front of his uh, church, he would sell, or in front of his uh, shop, he would sell Bibles to people who want to buy Bibles. And in the back, uh, at night, he would produce rum. He wasn't a very nice man either. So Deacon Giles, one night, all his his uh, his brewers left him and quit and said, we can't work for you anymore, we're out of here. So he was so desperate, he decided to hire these folks right here, and he hired the devils. As you can see, they're all dressed up, but you see their devil's tail. And he told the devils, hey, you know, I, I can't pay you, but I can give you a Bible. So after you're done working tonight, um, as you leave in the morning, I'll give you a, a Bible. So the devil, the devils agreed to that. So uh, they, they did it. They went out back and started producing rum. And Deacon Giles realized that they were the best rum makers ever. You know what? The, the devils were used to, you know, hotness and fire and brimstone and all that. And the brewery itself was full of uh, smoke and steam and all that. And they produced more rum than any of his other brewers ever produced. So he was a real happy guy. So the next morning comes, you can see all the barrels of rum that they produced. Next morning come, they start to deliver the alcohol to, um, to the local taverns. And when you make a deal with the devil, as you know, something always seems to go wrong. What the devils did is as they made each barrel of rum, they would put little inscriptions on it. So, but you wouldn't see it until all the alcohol was delivered to the taverns. So if you drank out of this keg right here, death started coming on. So if you drank from there, you would die. So they put all these little inscriptions on it and the, the barkeepers, they didn't want anything to do with it. So what they did is they returned all the alcohol and, um, and there you go for our friend Deacon Giles, but he, uh, he, uh, you know, when you make a deal with the devil, funny things happen. Um, so the bro this this little uh, broadside was from uh, the PBD, the Phillips Library, PBDS, part of the PBSX Museum. And as you can see, there's a little song down below here. And they call it a parody. And this song, really, there's really no music to it. I couldn't find anything. But but you could, you could also read it and then maybe get a melody in your head. So... I was doing that one day, so I figured I got a little melody. In Salem, when the sun was low, deep silence held each street and row, and solemn was the distant flow of oceans rolling heavily. But Salem saw another sight when lurid fires in candlelight gleamed bluely out at dead of night from Deacon Giles' distillery. So I just kind of made that tune up and it kind of fits it. Um, and it goes on talking about, you know, how, you know, the devils were paid in Bibles and, and how the inscriptions came out. So it's kind of a fun little song. A, well, they call it a parody. It's a parody. It's, it's probably written um, in the same kind of format of it as another song that they knew um, at that time. So there you go. Well, as you know, Deacon Giles, the distillery didn't go away because uh, they opened up about five or six years ago in Salem and they produced gin and rum and a few other things. And if you ever go, it's a, a nice little kind of speakeasy type place uh, in off of Canal Street in Salem. Oop, uh, let's go back here. Uh, well, well, we're going to end tonight with The Mermaid. Um, the Mermaid is, a, is one of those camp songs happy camp songs about death and destruction, which is pretty interesting. A song, you'll probably recognize a song. It was sung, you know, if you went to the, if you went to camps, you would probably sung around the campfire by one of the, uh, one of the camp leaders. But this is a, uh, this is a, a poster for the bicentennial celebration that happened in Salem in 1976. As you know, we celebrated our bicentennial. And a local shanty group the starboard list sang um, at that 
at that event. And they also recorded a version of that, um, that song. So if you look at, here are the three gentlemen right here, with Peter Marston and David Jones, and this gentleman, Charlie O'Flaherty, Flaherty is, uh, he passed away um, several years ago. And this is a photo we were at a sing in 2020, right before COVID hit. And there's David Jones from that same group. This was in Gloucester. And there's Peter Marston, those same folks that were uh, in that group that performed in Salem in 1776. And they sung the mermaid. I had talked to David about that. <coughs> he sung the mermaid. And again, David allowed me to use his song on the Salem CD. One interesting, I need a drink here for a second. Interesting thing about the song is it's it, it really not about Salem or anything. In the town that you sing or that you mention in the song, you can change to Portsmouth or Newport or New Bedford. <coughs> so, but a lot of the versions, for some reason, people use Salem. And David, in this case, used Salem. So I'll play, play some of this. You'll probably recognize it. <coughs> Twas Friday morn when we set sail And being not far from the land We there did espy a little mermaid With a comb and a glass in her hand Oh, the raging seas do roar and the stormy winds do blow And we poor sailors are skipping up the loft While the land lovers lie down below, below, below While the land lovers lie down below Then up and spoke the greasy old cook And a greasy old cook was he I care much more for my kettles and my pots than I do for the bottom of the sea. Oh, the raging seas do roar, and the stormy winds do blow, and we poor sailors are skipping up aloft, while the land lovers lie down below, 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 while the land lovers lie down below. Then up spoke the captain of our gallant ship, and a fine-looking man was he. I've married me a wife in old Salem town, tonight she a widow will be. Oh, the raging seas do roar, and the stormy winds do blow. And we poor sailors are skipping up a lot While the land lovers lie down below, below, below While the land lovers lie down below So that was David Jones singing The Mermaid. You know, The Mermaid, you know, it has that whole thing about it. If you see a mermaid and you're out on a ship or sailing, it's really bad news and, and, it, and it leads to uh, death uh, and the sinking of the ship. It's one of those wise little, those tales. Well, um, thank you, Michael, and everybody that joined us today. I certainly appreciate it. Um, there are the books and CD and certainly available wherever you want to buy it, uh, except in a shop downtown, uh, but online you can do it or if you need the, uh, the CD, you're welcome to, uh, you can download that also. Um, so, but thanks. And, you know, any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them if I can. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Bob. Wonderful job. Thank you, Raylene. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I loved. I loved all those. Those. Those great, unbelievable. I, you just don't know history until you. You know, you go to a Bob Strom event like today. Yeah. Well, it's very specific, Michael. <laughs> you know, but thanks. I everybody. thought maybe you'd sing to Lydia Pinkham. Well, you know, I. Uh, that will be in the next book, Bob. How's that song? Oh, you know, oh okay, yeah, yeah. Because her 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 medical facility or or is right by your house, also that little clinic. I guess that's right. Yeah. yeah, I looked right down yeah. at it. Yep. Yeah. So the next but one they, I was going to put it in, I I didn't. So. Yeah, but her her tonic, you know, was a big percent of alcohol originally. Yeah. So oh, sure. it, right. it could go. That's interesting. They put the. Uh, statue right across from the father matthew statue they put her house across from the father matthew statue i mean yeah 
Yeah, well, she sold it as medicine as opposed to alcohol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of funny how things work, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for this information. You're yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure a lot thank of it you, was Bob. true. It was wonderful. Thank you, Nancy. I thank loved, you. loved hearing all the history, all the time must have gone into putting that all together. I really appreciated uh, it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can't eight wait years. to see the first one. I yeah, the first, the first one is is on YouTube. You could probably Google Tabernacle Church in my name, and it comes up. So you can see the first oh, one. Good. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you. I think you. it has four four views, and Joe's one of them. So. Well, when's part three? Are you going to do another one? Well, I I do have another one if 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 Michael's willing sometime in the future, you know. Uh, but uh, I do, I do have another one. Wonderful. Great. I go on forever, I guess, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, that, that's great. I was hoping Cynthia would be be here at the, for this one. Going on forever. You're starting to sound like a preacher, Bob. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I don't no. <laughs> no, not not a preacher. That's I don't think that's me at this point. Yeah, so thank you very much. Ask, yeah. I was gonna ask you what's on the CD, Bob. Is it is it just these songs or have you included um Irish tunes or anything like that? No, just just the songs that have that Salem connection. Okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so I think there's 10 songs and you and I played I think uh one, two, three, three or four of them today. So mm -hmm. Well, it's just wonderful to hear them. Thank I mean, you. I guess because we're so familiar with Salem, we can just take the ride down, go right. to the Willows, and the Willows is so beautiful today. Mm -hmm. I just love it. You, you're doing uh, just bathing under those trees, you know, just right. yeah. so nourishing. And the history is so beautiful in Salem. So it, I'm glad you are able to capture things well, that I've never even heard of. Oh, well, I mean, before the project, I probably never heard of half of them, you know, <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, it was just fun to do. And it's my kind of hobby, as you know. Yeah. Very good. But, yeah, Bobby, I have a question. Yeah, sure. About that Deacon Guile song. Yeah. And the fire. Yeah. Do you have any time frame on that? Yeah, that was uh, uh, that was about eighteen fifty. But let me let me just check off the top of my head. Does it refer to something prior to that? No, eighteen thirty five. Betsy. Eighteen thirty five. Okay. Yeah, that's when that that's when that broadside was printed. Okay. Well, the reason I ask is, you know, when Tabernacle split off from First Church, we were across the street. And we, there was a big warehouse there and there was a fire in 1774, downtown Salem, the warehouse is burned. Mm. You know, what, all the wharfs and stuff were all the way up there. And I wanna say that it had something to do with rum, <laughs> but I'm not well, sure. So that's the, why I was asking. The original location of Deacon Giles Distillery was on Front Street, right next to Old Town Hall. Okay. When, if you're looking at Old Town Hall, it'll be on your left. That was the original yep. location. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I'm going to have so. to do some investigating. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you, if you find anything, let me know. I'm curious myself. You know? I just thought that was really interesting. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I just kind of, I didn't, I, well, I just gave you kind of a general overview of what happened uh, and mm. selling Bibles and making rum all in the same days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah. You uh, got to you you love, you go. <laughs> you gotta love it. human ingenuity. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, boy. But uh, hopefully that, that Reverend Whip Worcester. Uh, um, well, we have some of sense. those Isaac Watts ones too, I think. With some Although, of his books. Yeah, I, I'll have to I'll have to look at them in the cabinet. Yeah. There's, there's several. But, <laughs> yeah, but but Worcester was the one that really brought music to the 
uh, standardize the music really to, to the yeah songs. well and the fact that he had music at the ordination for the um the missionaries is a big deal too because mm. there weren't organs and there weren't pianos and he brought he had somebody bring in the um the cello to be played yeah, right. yeah. um right. you know and and there was music specifically played for that ordination mm. Yeah, that's right. So, all right. Well, well he was a big again, music yeah. guy. Yeah, he was. There's no question. Yeah. And to 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 assign a tune to uh, 150 psalms and 475 spiritual songs, uh -huh. mm. that would be. You can imagine what that work would be. You know, mm. to do that, you'd mm. have to know the tune. You'd have mm. to kind of make it match to the to the verses. Mm. It would be really a hard work, if you ask me. Yeah. So, labor yeah. of love, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, he was he was a worker. So he he did a lot in his uh, short life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of sickly, I guess, at the end of his life. So. Mm. Well, mm. how did you get interested in this? Doing this oh. series. Oh, it just it, it all started around with my friend Bill Smith, who you saw. <clears throat> we used to play some Salem tunes at the Salem Contra Dance, um, and then that just one thing led to another, and and. Bill and I would talk about it every once in a while and I'd put everything in a big folder and then kind of grew from there. And then I started researching and it just kind of slowly built up over time. Yeah. Is there a library? Did you use the Salem library or what libraries did you use? <clears throat> oh, every, every one that I could go to the Phillips library, the Salem public library, the Athenaeum, um, uh, the Beverly library, uh, and, wow. and then online archives, you know, there's plenty of Ooh. stuff online now, which is great. Oh, that's excellent. All, all sorts well, of you're places. a busy guy for someone who's retired. <laughs> yeah, retired. <right. laughs> you got like a whole yeah. new career going on here. It's it's fun. <laughs> it's it's all fun. It's all fun. Right, Jen? Not quite retired yet, but yeah. almost. So well. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. If you thank you. Questions. <laughs> and if you Yay. want to do a part three, I'll be happy to do one, you know, if there's any interest at all. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. All right. Hey, good so, night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks for good coming again. by. Thanks. See, See you later. soon. Thank you, Bob. Great job, Bob, as always. Great job. Right. Have a great thank night. Thank you. Oh, not that, Bob. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Bob. Bob Anthony, yeah. you keep coming. You rascal, yeah. Bob Anthony. I love you, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Another Bob around. Yeah. Oh, well. Goodbye. <laughs>